Hello and welcome. My name is Ashley and I host this little podcast, One Stitch After Another. Thank you so much for clicking on this video if you've decided to. If you're a returning viewer, you are very welcome. If you're new and you found me somehow, I'd love to know where you're from. Anyway, what am I going to talk about today? I'm just looking down at some notes, so do excuse me. I am going to talk about some whips. I'm going to talk about some finished objects. I'm going to talk about a couple of acquisitions and uh, some knitting regrets etc so if you think this might be of interest to you go and grab yourself a cuppa or a coffee or if it's that time of day a cocktail whatever floats your boat so i pulled a face when i talked about acquisitions there because um one of my goals for 2024 if you saw that video back in january was to um not buy unnecessary yarn now, there's a couple of things that we do need to address. But um, let's have a little think. First of all, um, in February, I went up to Leeds and Harrogate um, to spend some time with my daughters who live up there. It was the eldest daughter's birthday. And I did a little bit of research, as us knitters often do, to see if there were any yarn shops worth uh, going to. Now... My eldest daughter's lived in Leeds since she was 18 and she's 26 now, so it's quite some time. And one of the first times that I went to see her when she was still at uni, um, I did pay a visit to Bar Ram U, a delightful little shop um, on the outskirts of the city centre. And it's sadly no longer, no longer there. I think they only operate online. So I did a little bit of research and I found this little shop called Unique. So I'll put a little clip on, it's only very short, of my um, visit there. shop as you could see there based on the outskirts of Leeds near Pudsey a little village called Farsley which was really um looked really interesting actually there were lots of um coffee shops little independent boutiques little bistros it looked absolutely fabulous but their address as you saw there was three mending rooms Sunnybank Mills and it was this big I presume old textile mill that has been converted into a range of shops and outlets um there was an archers there 
uh, making uh, bows and arrows and quivers and things like that, which I thought was really interesting and almost opposite unique, which I think is a lovely name. It's a cute logo, isn't it? Um, opposite there was a sewing studio where you could learn dressmaking and there was a, a really big fabric shop haberdashers. And I wish we'd had a little bit more time. Um, but oh, I'm really sorry. I don't think the lady who owns the shop will watch. Um, but I think her name was Julie. And I'm really sorry if I've got that wrong. It's such a long time ago. Um, she was so friendly and there was a lady sat at the ta at a table uh, drinking coffee and she I think her name was Jude or Judith and she was a rep from Yorkshire West Yorkshire Spinners and um I was trying to be mindful about the fact that I'm not supposed to be buying yarn this year but I did make a souvenir purchase and what better than a ball of West Yorkshire Spinners Sock Yarn and this is Sandra Rhodes Signature 4 Ply and the colour is Forest Stripes. It's quite nice and soft. Um, it says it contains 35% blue faced Leicester. Uh, perfect for socks. It's 75% wool, 25% nylon, 400 metres per 100 gram skein. And I'm going to knit myself a pair of stripy socks in this. I don't actually own any hand knitted socks. I think all of my children have got two pairs each of hand knitted socks so yes um that was a purchase which leads me on well just before i say what my next acquisition was i just want to say how friendly um both of the ladies in the yarn shop were um i'd only been in there about three minutes and i felt like i'd known the owner for years it transpires that she's an ex-secondary school teacher like myself i think she said that she's taught textiles which makes sense doesn't it um but it was a lovely little shop as you could see and i'd like to thank both of the ladies for making me feel very very welcome quite a few people came in and out of the store while i was there and um yeah I'll leave a link to them down below. They have a loyalty scheme. If you live locally, uh, they have a loyalty scheme. Um, if you spend so much money, you get a stamp. And then after so many purchases, I think you get a discount. So, my other acquisition. Oh dear, my FOMO kicked in. So, I'm subscribed, like many of you, I guess, to The Lovely Gainer at Tales from Cuckoo Land here on YouTube. And she shared a video, I think it was in February, um, about the fact that she'd been up to Lay Family Yarns in Shropshire and had done some yarn dyeing. And she dyed a limited edition, a special colourway of their merino. Um, and here it is. Look at the gorgeousness of this. Um, it's called Herkle Durkle. Oh, God. It is so lovely and soft. Mind you, a lot of merino is, isn't it? So this is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and there is 425 metres on a 100 gram skein. I was very naughty and I bought three because I thought I want a sweater's quantity. So I'm just going to put that down there because I'm running out of room. <laughs> I have started to knit a garment and let me see if I can find the pattern. True to form. Ah, oh, here it is. Yes. I ummed and ahed for ages about what I was going to knit and I thought I really want a cardigan. Um, and as I say, I ummed and ahed and ummed and ahed and I think I had 12, 1,275 metres and I'm quite chunky around the old bust area um don't know what that face was um so yes but I had a very kind of fixed idea of what I wanted to do anyway I have started to make progress on the pearl code cardigan by Isabel Kramer I'll just show you that picture there now I'm going to have a go at modifying this which I'll talk about in a minute but what is lovely about this pattern is that I don't know whether you can just see there's a little bit of texture on it and what she's done it's called the pearl code cardigan because 
she has devised um, a little pattern for each letter of the alphabet using the idea of dot dot dash Morse code. So um, yeah, it's really good fun. And this is what I've got so far. And hopefully you'll be able to see the gorgeous little speckles in this cardigan. That board has just fallen on the floor. So it's knit in one piece, top down. I'm just about at the point where I'm going to separate for the sleeves. And um, the pattern is very free and fluid and, and it's up to you what letters, if any, you want to include. So... The colourway that Gaynor dyed this yarn is called Herkel Durkel. Um, and she's doing a, a knit along um, or make along, uh, along with Kerry from Lay Family Yarns um, with the hashtag something about Herkel Durkel. I'll, I'll leave it in the description box if I can. And um, I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. Look at the colours. But my Morse code pattern actually randomly is going to spell, if you read it downwards, Herkel Durkel. So I've, um, yeah, so you can see one of the sleeves there, the one of the fronts and then the back. I'm knitting the fourth size, which will give a 46 inch bust. I'm not quite that big but I wanted quite a bit of positive ease. And I'm not going to do, so the way I'm going to modify this, I'm not going to do the, the length of this, and I'm gonna make the sleeves slightly shorter, I think, uh, just to make sure that I've got enough yarn. But the other thing that I want to do, so I want it to be something that I would wear over a dress or with a skirt rather than with trousers so I want it to be quite cropped and boxy and I'm going to try and work out how to do like the little hidden pocket so not a patch pocket that you sew on the front but a little would it be an afterthought pocket I don't know um and I have knitted them in the past, not for a very, very, very long time, but I thought that'd be quite cute. And I might use a contrast yarn for that. And then what I'm also going to do with the buttons, I thought it would be really cute. A la um, White Stuff, if you're in the UK and you know the clothing brand White Stuff, they quite often on their garments have different shaped and different coloured buttons. And I thought it'd be really cute to try and pick out all the different colours of specs. So there's like a blue, there's um, this kind of orangey colour, and then there's like a dark pink, and there's also a kind of yellow in there as well, like a mustard yellow. So I have loads and loads and loads of buttons. So I'm going to go hunting through my stash and find different colours um, for this and I'm really much in, very much enjoying it um, I love the the raglan shaping and the, oh, this is going to be so nice to wear and I think it's such a gorgeous neutral pale neutral colour that um, it'll go with lots of things so I can pick out colours that are actually in the yarn for a garment like a linen dress in this kind of blue colour would be lovely if I hold it it bring in the skein again which I've thrown on the floor it's not very good is it <laughs> yeah so um see that blue there that might be quite nice a, a linen dress in that colour um but yes I, th I, I hope you can get the idea of what I mean about the buttons so I'm so enjoying that I can't wait um Tonight I'm going to sit down and hopefully I'll crack on, get past that raglan shaping. So I've got about eight rows, I think, um, until I'm separating for the sleeves. Oh, it's exciting. I'm really, really excited. Right, let me have a look and see. So that is good. Those are the only yarn purchases I've made. Although I have recently been to the hairdressers and made a discovery. Yes, I had my hair dyed bright pink. Um, I'll stick a photo in.
so sadly it's mostly gone now there's a little bit of pink left but it's very very pale um I, I loved being bright pink anyway while I was sat there um looking at myself in the mirror which I hate at hairdressers I don't know about you um a lady came in and sat on the sofa in these hairdressers. It's quite a quirky salon that I go to. And she started knitting. And about 10 minutes later, another lady came in and sat on the sofa and started knitting. So um, I went over and I said, um, do, do you knit here every week? And they said, yeah. And I said, oh, I might come if that's okay. And they said, yeah, please do. So um, I've started going. But... Um, the lady that owns the hair salon, she's called Rebecca. Um, it's a big premises. Um, there's a downstairs. It used to be a gentleman outfitters. And um, there's premises downstairs, which she wasn't uni using. So um, she got somebody to kind of separate it into um, separate little units. And she's subletting those. And uh, obviously with the council's approval and everything, you know. And um, she's sublet one of them to a lovely lady called Lou, who's opened up a little haberdasher's shop there because we had one in rugby. That's where I live in the UK, by the way. And um, it had been there for donkey's years. It was called Moe's Fabrics and she sold everything. Um, but she retired uh, just before Christmas. So we're lacking a haberdasher's in rugby now. But Lou has started off in this little um, shop and that's now where we meet for her little knit along. I invited her to um, the rugby stitch and bitch that I go to on a Wednesday evening and uh, she started coming to that as well which is lovely. So I'll leave a link to Lou's um, sewing studio down below. She is going to be stocking quite a lot of yarn soon. Um, I know that she's met with the Stylecraft rep and is very excited. I had a sneak peek of the um, shade cards um, and you know what's hot for 2024 um, so she's going to be stocking all of that and she's doing workshops as well so yeah so that was a really nice discovery that I made and I've you know made another new friend and um, she started coming to our local um, knit night as well which is lovely so let's come on to the rest of my whips then so I've shown you the pearl code cardigan, which I really, really like. Um, the other thing that I've been working on is my northeasterly blanket. I'm not going to show you that today because I showed you that last time. Uh, but I have made a bit more progress with my Bolan tea. So this is one piece. I bought this yarn in Venice a long, long time ago. Um, and it's a front and back, it will need a jolly good blocking, but this lace panel at the top will form the sleeves. And if, can you see, it's cotton, very fine, and it's got little sequins in them. So that's the one piece, which I think I might have had finished when I showed this on my channel previously. And then, um, I'm almost at the point on this where I'm going to um, cast on extra stitches for the sleeve. Um, so, yeah, I think when I've got my Herkle Durkle cardigan out of the way, this is going to be all systems go. So I can wear this in the summer. It's lovely and lightweight. Um, I think I showed in a previous podcast that I wanted to do the Corano sweater and I had started it. I'm using Bichet Bouche Petite Lambs Wool. Um, in a really gorgeous pale pink colour. There's a lot of pale pink going on. Um, and I did pick it up to have a little go on it uh, about a month ago. And I thought, what I've done doesn't marry up with the pattern. So I think I'm going to have to frog it and start again. Because I do really want to knit that. But that's on the back burner now. So that's all my whips really at the moment. I've got my North Easterly blanket, which I'm really trogging ahead with. I've got my pearl coat cardigan, which... I'm really, really enjoying. Um, it's basically stocking stitch, but that little bit of pearl um, and the idea of the Morse code just gives it a little bit of interest. So I'm really, really enjoying that. Um, right, finished objects. Haven't got a lot to show you. Um, one of the finished objects was for somebody else and they now have it. So I've got a little bit of footage here of me giving that to them or showing it before I give it to them. 
So my friend Julie is coming to pick this up in a minute. We're going to have a nice spot of lunch together. I can't get this all in shot, but it is blocked now. And I love it. The drape, the feel of this yarn. I'm sorry I'm not getting it all in shot. I'm not very good at blocking. It is a skill, isn't it, in itself? But I hope that she likes it. I might put a little bit of footage in of her accepting it, receiving it. Let me know in the comments what you think. And I'll leave a link to, um, um, I think it's Innis Sanger. I'll leave a link to her pattern in the description box. So that's the second amber shawl that I've knitted. And um, I'm going to knit one of those for myself, actually, at some point. Probably not this year, because uh, you can have too much of a good thing, can't you? But I've really, really, really enjoyed that pattern. And I've favourited a few. Um by Innes Sanger um, I just I just really like her style so that was that then um, I've shown this little bear before he's for somebody else as well but I've now knitted him out of some scrap of sock yarn um, a little cardigan it's not brilliantly knit and um, the buttons aren't quite right I would have liked a slightly smaller button and the cardigan pattern that I followed, it's just slightly too big for the bear. So what I think I might do, um, because the person I'm knitting this for said that they did want them to be not nude. <laughs> um, I think I will include the cardigan for them, but I'll also knit a scarf in a, a similar yarn. But yeah, I don't like him covered up because I like to see his belly. So tiny, tiny little cardigan. And then... The other thing that I have finished, which I really love, is my gnome. My Mr. Nifty Gnome. Absolutely love him. Now, this is an imagined landscapes pattern. I'll, I'll leave everything that I've talked about linked in the description box if I can. He's so big I can't get him in shot. He is so adorable. I have enjoyed absolutely everything about knitting this. And if you've ever knit one of Sarah's patterns, you will know that they are incredibly well supported with tutorials. So one of the things that I really enjoyed doing that I have never enjoyed doing before is Kitchener Stitch. I've followed various tutorials and always got in a bit of a pickle, but actually, Look at his bottom. So we've got a central double decrease, which I haven't done quite right looking at her um, example uh, on one of her videos. I mean, the shape's right, but I I, I should have. I, I did my own thing. I knew that you had to decrease two stitches, but should I have slipped them separately or should I have slipped two together to get a neat look at that? I, I don't know, but it's not quite right. But it was very satisfying, that kind of... And then that there's my where my Kitchener stitch is. He's got a bit of a wonky bottom, but he sits up beautifully. And then there's um, instructions on how to do this mosaic stitch, which is really, mosaic stitch is dead easy. You're just knitting with one colour per, per round or per row. But what makes this a little bit more interesting is that it's in garter stitch. Um, and then she even has got a tutorial on how to do the tassel. And look at his nose. I love his nose. And he's just got so much character. If you've never knit a gnome, I can say that they're quite addictive. And I'm definitely going to knit another one. Definitely going to knit another one. And they don't take up much yarn. So if you've got scraps, that's really good. So he can sit there. I've got space for him on one of my shelves. Um, so that is all my finished objects, really. Um, so future plans. I did ask on my last podcast if anybody had got any ideas for what I could do with this. I think I've got three skeins of this beautiful, beautiful yarn. And I have found a pattern that I think I'm going to do, and it's called Posy. And um, that's what it looks like from the back. It's knit in one piece again. I was going to do it for my Herkel Durkle project, but um, it was too complicated at the time to start quickly. I wanted something that I could start quickly and post pictures on Instagram. Um, so that's one picture of it. I'm going to see if I can find who it's designed by. 
what's really useful in the PDF as well, which um, I haven't seen before, it's not to say that it isn't out there, is that um, there is a PDF file for each individual size. So you work out what size you want to do. And then, um, there we go, just download that particular PDF. I mean, you get access to all of the sizes, but I think that's really, really useful. It doesn't say who it's by. I will link in the description box, but I love it. And I think I'm going to do it in that dark blue. I don't know. I'm thinking winter over a nice dress. And then I'm thinking, because it's got the copper sparkles in it, little tiny copper metallic buttons. Yes, I think that could be quite nice for Christmas. So that is a future plan, possibly. I'm definitely going to cast on at some point soon my uh, habitation throw. I think that could be quite nice just to dip in and out of. Um, but yes, I, I'm really enjoying my knitting at the moment. And I want to talk about mystery knit alongs. I've mentioned them before. I really enjoyed this. I didn't do it as a mystery knit along. It was published as a mystery knit along. I joined the party late. I bought the pattern at the time, but didn't have time to join in the, the um, MCAL. Um, I think, um, and what I'm wearing actually is a mystery knit along. This is um, a cow from Nomadic Knits. And I think this was the 2022 MCAL. Um, the 12 Days of Christmas 2022 um, and this was one of my first goes at colour work I have shown this before so I'm not going to bang on about it but um, I'm going to talk about something to do with it in a minute um, I think small projects are fine for mystery knit alongs my big regret is spending all that money on this. And I'm gonna frog this. I'm going to weigh how much yarn I've got left. I mean, the yarn itself is beautiful. It's so soft. The Biano May Cash Merino. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna frog this completely. I don't know when. Um, and find something else to do with it but yeah i i regret having joined in that mystery knit along i wish there hadn't been a controversy about it and i understand that there was controversy about it but i think if i ever do a stephen west pattern again and i will i would like to do one of his shawls um there's a couple that i've got my eye on i don't think i've got enough yardage to use the rest of that cash merino for one but um i don't think i'm going to join in one of his mystery knit alongs again um but my final thing i'm going to wrap up with because i have been here quite some time and you've all got lots of things to do haven't you including knitting i was wearing this the other night while we were sitting watching telly and i was knitting on my herkel durkle project and um i was quite warm so i took it off and i put it on the sofa between us and he picked it up and he looked at it and he said, do you know, that's amazing what you've done there. I really like that. But what's even more amazing is that somebody designed this. And it is something that I'm going to have a go at. My husband said to me, I ought to do more how-to videos. And if you've got any comments on what kind of knitting content you'd like me to provide on this channel, please do leave a comment in the comment section. And I said, oh, that would be quite good, is to do a, a series of tutorials on how to do different stitches and different techniques, but in a cowl. So maybe there would be 12 sections or something, I don't know. Um, and at the end of that tutorial, you'd have something really pretty to wear. So I'm going now, I'm going to finish my coffee that's gone cold. I'm going to tidy up all this mess that's on the floor. But if you have found any value at all in this video, please do consider subscribing if you're not already. Hit that notification bell so you know when I next upload. And um, don't forget to leave a comment and a thumbs up. Whatever you're knitting, put love into every stitch. I'll be back soon.
Bye now.